Hi guys, it's Rochelle from Monoline Furniture again. Back today for another furniture flip. And today we're going to be working on Ooh, this. Stick with me. Okay, here she is. I actually picked this up um, quite a while ago. I brought it home to refurb it. And my daughter saw it and said, nope, I'm keeping that. Don't touch it. She's now left home and said I can deal with it as I please. So here we go. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, you can see straight away that it is vintage. It's got the caps on the back. Um, I'll actually show you. What, what do you do to take these off? Um, well, what I do, just get a flathead screwdriver and just sort of jimmy it. And then they'll pop off. And underneath, you'll see um, a bolt and then the end of the screw. So they come off pretty easily. <clears throat> um Oh, it's just gorgeous I just love it at this point I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the top oh let's have a look what that is there yeah it's just a varnish so um that's an easy fix it that's just sanding off if I decide to sand it I think I'll be sanding the top my thoughts at this time are that I'm going to do the body in black spray these gold and then maybe like a walnut top not 100% on that because I sort of change my mind as I'm going but it's just a beautiful piece I've only got one sadly but it's quite a big um, bedside I probably see this in a an entry hall or even in the lounge room so it's not something that i would just mark it as being a bedside um it's more than that it's beautiful anyway let's get uh let's get set up and ready to go camera's there let's do this okay let's go so firstly yes these are pajamas Yes, I generally paint in pyjamas all the time. Actually, in anything that I'm in. I don't certainly don't get dressed for the occasion. Whatever I'm in, I go with. So, you've seen before, I'm not really proud about what I look like when I'm painting. So, let's just go for it. So, what I'm going to do first is sand this top off just to see what's underneath. It's going to be quite red, which is why I'm thinking of going a walnut. If anything, I just want to see how it comes up. I'm also thinking that I might just paint it, but I'd, I'd like to showcase the, the wood if I can, if it's worth it. So I'm going to sand the top first. If I was definitely going to paint it, then I would just scuff sand it. But I'm not sure. So um, as usual, I'm going with a 120 grit with my um, Bosch sander. If it was um, a less powerful sander i'd be using um, an 80 but this one only needs the 120. okay let's get started on that Now, it might look to you like it's coming off very easily, and I guess it is with this, but um, that's pretty thick. It's um, it's high gloss, which is why it's um, very thick. But you can see when it's thick, when you've got these really definite edges, which we're seeing here. So it's coming off pretty easily because I've got a good sander. But um, I'm not going to do it on the edges. I've decided as I'm doing this. I actually, with these more vintage pieces, I actually prefer to just do the top and paint the edges. I just think it's a little bit more elegant and possibly more in keeping with the piece. So I will need to fix that up. So I'll just sand that back to, to fix that little damaged area. And then I'll be painting it. So it's, I'm glad I'm doing this actually because I've never done this on a, on a YouTube video. So I'll show you how I go about getting this perfect edge once it's painted there. Um, 
but it's as I expected it to be, it's quite red underneath. I don't know what this wood is. Hopefully someone watching will be able to tell me. I'm no expert on wood. I just knew it was gonna be red. Okay, let's get this finished. I'll just show you how I take these off so you'll generally find a little area there we are and they just clip out so there's three little teeth on it and then you've got a square nut on it so you unscrew that and that's the case for all the drawers so I'll go and do all that now so that's the top all done drawer pulls all off I put them in a, in a Bag. So they, I think each one comes in. We've got two fronts, two, two screws. Yeah, it's a few pieces. So make sure you keep them all in the bag so you don't lose anything. I'm going to spray paint these afterwards. I'll show you when I do that. Don't forget to spray paint all of the components. Um, now what I'm going to do is just scuff sand it everywhere and pay a little bit more attention to this bit here that's got a little bit of damage. And then I'll decide on what I'm going to paint it. So I was finding that sand a, a little bit too harsh for this. So I'm just going to go, um, this is a 120. So I'm just going to do it by hand. But all that I'm doing, I'm not planning on taking this off. This is just to give the paint some teeth to stick to. See, and what that's done is create these scratches. Well, I'm not happy about that now. Oh, actually, no, that's not. It's smooth. There's just something there. Yeah, we we'll go. So you just play it by ear, really, with each piece that you do. Sometimes using the hand sander is fine, but because this is a high gloss, you're going to create more work for yourself sometimes. Now I need to smooth those bits out a little bit. So you're just really deglossing it. And when you're doing this, any marks that are on there will show up. Any sort of in, um, little scratches or anything will show up really. Um, really badly anyway they'll show up because that's just got dust in it now it's very slight but you can see there's it looks like there's a massive crack there isn't and i'm pretty sure i decided i'm gonna go with black I think this just look really elegant and black and saleable, which 
obviously a pin. This is what we want. see from there but all that I've done is even it out so that the paint so they're not going to see any sort of chip or anything there it wasn't a chip it was <clears throat> a chip of the varnish not the wood so you see the difference now with me just using this you haven't got the um the deeper scratches dust off but now I'm going to give it a clean if you haven't seen before I use um, Dixie Bell white lightning it comes in a powder crystal form and you just mix it up I see some people mixing a big bowl of it for each piece um, with warm water um, all I tend to do is just mix it have it pre-mixed in this makes it last a lot longer and yeah I love it I just find this to be the most um, cost effective way of cleaning them. Initially I was using just regular kitchen cleaner, you know, the multi-purpose spray and it does a job, but um, I was getting through it so quickly, but because this is, you sort of mix it yourself, it just lasts for ages. You see now that I've wiped that off, it looks like it's high gloss again. It isn't, I've taken that gloss off. And these bottles are misters, they're called misters I think. Um, I've seen them on a few stockists website that I've bought from. I bought mine from eBay. But um, you know, buying stuff from eBay at the moment and waiting for it to come from China. It's, um, a bit hit and miss you know it could literally be about two months and the where i've seen those um you can get it for the same price that i pay for them on ebay so look local that's what i would say okay so next i just wait for this to dry and whilst that's happening, I will spray paint the draw pulls. Yep, let's do that. Oh, side note, yes, I am using my husband's old undies to clean it with. These are perfect. They do such a good job. Don't throw them out. <laughs> right, so I've just, I've just um, washed off the, all the draw pulls and all the nets and everything, they're drying um, behind me on a tray. Once they're dry, I'll um, spray paint them. Uh, all I did was wash them with soapy water. That's all I ever do. I really just wanna get the grime off them. Okay, decision made. I haven't made a decision on the top yet, but I've got a few options. I'm going with Black Stump, which is from uh, unique options Australian mineral furniture paint okay I'll just read it repair oh, I'll read it to you there repair project if needed clean surface sand rough areas if needed done apply with soft brush brush or microfiber roller I'm using my um, Klingon 035 um, thin coats in one direction 40 to 60 minutes between coats honestly I very rarely wait that long I'm usually I usually start pretty much 
by the time I finish one coat I come around and I'm doing the next but follow the instructions not me um, no VOCs no odor satin finish you can use it on glass metal terracotta ceramic wood water that wood you can't use it on water water and mild soap to clean up okay so this is black stuff sorry if you can hear the bin men just decided to arrive can't complain New Year's Day in there working poor buggers actually look at me New Year's Day and I'm working poor me too okay so this is what size is this I wonder 250 mil do you think maybe 200 mil anyway this should be more than enough to do this project oh here we go my weak hands please don't have a seal on the top as well no we good okay looks nice so this is um as it's a mineral paint it's a, a three in one actually do, are all mineral paints does anyone know that are all mineral paints three in one or does it just happen to be the mineral paints are generally all in one someone answer that for me please can you have a mineral paint that is doesn't have a built-in top coat and primer i don't know okay let's go anyway ignore my rambling i'm sure you're used to it by now oh that's awesome coverage wow i mean it's going over a dark color but um and it's a dark paint but yeah this is going to be two coats for sure Ooh, that's good i actually haven't seen any samples of work painted in this i don't think anyway so, um, yeah, yeah, looks good. It does have really good coverage, the Unique Options. It's, it's called Australian Mineral Paint, but it's by Unique Options. So um, if you go to their website, it's UO Paint. I'm not sure if it's .com or .com.au, but then they've got, um, what does it say on there? No, because it's a sample box. Um, then within that website, they've got the the, the project Australian Mineral Paint, which is what this is. Um, and the reason that I mention that is because they also have a furniture paint that isn't a mineral paint. Uh, I'm not sure what it is, but it's it doesn't have the built-in um, top coat, so I wouldn't want you to get confused. Also, you wouldn't find black stump there because it's not one of those colours. So you're going to see me painting, oh, hopefully. Let me just adjust the camera in a second. So you can uh, see me doing this top section a little bit. That's better. So I'm going to be doing this and I'm not going to be fussy with it. I'm not going to be going, oh, I need to just be really careful and not go over there. I don't care if I go onto the wood. Because the clean edge is going to come from my final sand. So I don't do any taping. I know people that tape are probably looking at me and going, oh my God, you're ruining it. But I don't, I hate taping. So I don't, I don't do it. Oh, I haven't taken the drawers out. Yeah, so this is nice coverage, isn't it? What do you think? Look good in there. I can see it drying as I'm doing this. I can't feel any drag, which is good. you see the patches that are drying? Okay, I'm not gonna record all the way through this, all my painting. I think you get the gist. So um, I'll probably come back and show you when I start the second coat. So you can see if that is all that we're getting, if it's just gonna be two coats. 
but I'll carry on with the rest on my own. Here it is with the one coat on. Um, then you can see how I'm not fussy at all. When I do my smooth coat, my smooth sand, sorry, that will all be taken care of. Um, the finish is really nice. So this is just one coat. It's definitely just gonna be a two coat job. Um, I don't know if you can see how smooth it's finishing, but it's lovely, it's self-leveling. Feels quite uh, quite matte, but it is silky too. So we'll see what it's like after this um, next coat. I might end up doing a third coat and putting some top coat in it, but we'll see. Okay. Now, let's get these done. So I'm using Duramax Bright Finish in the, the gold and I've got everything laid out here <clears throat> don't go too close so I'll just do one coat like this then I'll leave it to dry then I give them a shake and move them around and go in again and go from all angles too learning from my own lessons here oh, I forgot about the angles here we are that dries really quickly so um, probably before I do the next coat on the drawers I'll do the next coat on these that's the two coats on full coverage beautiful finish really really smooth really happy with that so now I'm just going to wait for this to dry and then I'll smooth coat the top which will um, tidy up all these edges put the draw pulls on and then I'll decide on the stain I still have it and this is how much I've used probably less than 100 mil I would say pretty good okay so now it's time for the smooth coat and to tidy up these edges um, I've decided that I'm going to be using um, this is Unique Options again, their Pickles, which is their, their water-based stains um, in the colour Antique. I've used this before, it's got a little bit of red tones in it, which I think is going to work really well with this. I'm basically just working with what I've got. Um, this red is going to come through no matter what. Um, and I think it'll be a nice rich colour with this black. Um, if I tried to do a whitewash or something over this, you're going to end up with pink. It'll come through. So that's what I'm going to go with. So I'm just going to quickly sand this and then we get onto the stain. So now you can see we've got this beautiful edge now. There's no bleed of the paint or anything, and I didn't have to do any taping. Oh, hang on, Let's see a bit over there. A little bit of black. Okay. Right. So now I've got. My pickles and my sponge this one is the Dixie Bell Gator Hide I think that's what it is Gator Hide applicator any sponge will do the job this one's seen better days to be honest it's not very soft but they do last pretty well and the sponge is quite compressed in it so they hold their shape well right just pour it on not too much you can always put more on but taking it off not so much so literally just side to side and you can see that that red is coming out and whatever stain went in like that would happen so I just decided to work with it and I'm glad I have because it's already looking beautiful really rich and there's no edges to do and that this sponge is actually really good for that because it's so it's so dense. This the sponge is not um, inclined to sort of um, go over the edges. When we get to the edges, it sort of it just keeps the shape nice and flat, 
which is what you want when you're just doing a top and you're not doing sides. Oh, this is really, really nice. You never know what a stain is gonna go like. If I was to put this on, on pine, which I have done before, totally different. So as much as you can do your research, it really is dependent on what you're putting it on. So this is a, a wood with lots of red in it and an antique stain that's got some red in it. And it's working really beautiful together, beautifully together. So the, I'll probably only put this one coat on. Doesn't need anything more than that. Um, then when this is dry, I will use the Unique Options top coat. And again, I'll apply that with a sponge. That's my go-to now. So much easier to clean up as well than using brushes and stuff and you get a much better finish. I just rinse these out, squeeze them out. Rinse them with water, not soapy water. I just use water and put them on the side to dry. Look at that. That's stunning. As I'm going over it now, I'm seeing more brown. So I don't want to do too much because I'm actually liking the red that's in it. So a lot of that red that's come out will be the natural colour from the wood. So even if you just rubbed a wet cloth over it, you'd see that red. There's no hiding it. So I don't want to go too much with this because I want to keep this red. I don't want to cover it too much. Oh, I'm really, really, really happy with that. Okay, I'll let that dry and then I'll come back and do the top coat. Top coat time and we are done. So it's turned into a complete unique options project so never wasn't planned but then mine never are um unique options top coat satin so it's on the body i've used the unique options australian mineral paint in the color black stump the top is unique options pickles antique stain and then the top coat is unique options top coat satin and this is a really like milky texture and just on with a sponge so I'll do two, maybe three coats of this. It's a satin finish, you're not going to get a high gloss, but I never do a high gloss. So I'm just putting it on flat, like I did with this stain. Just brushing it from one end to the other. I'm really happy with how this has turned out. Really happy. So time will tell how well this sells because it's a it is a bedside. I mean, I'll market it as a side table as well. But um, single bedsides, um, they don't sell so well on their own. But this was I was given this, and. Um, it's beautiful so we will see but it was only one on its own I didn't have two but we will see it's one of those pieces that to be honest I'm not gonna be pushing it to sell it <laughs> if it doesn't sell it'll just stay in my house and I'll be very happy with that okay guys I'll go and take some pics when it's um all set up and we're good thanks for sticking with me